So our first letter of each word come as a capital letter and there is no space between each Clear. word any so, variable it should be in camel case so first letter start with small for the first word and if there is second word. let's do some practice on data type variable and their naming convention so before creating any variable in java you must have to understand these three type of case pascal case camel case and screaming snake case or constant case so what are those three type of case so let's take an example and understand so in this slide you can see i have written my name arun kumar hajra so these are basically first name middle name and last name three separate word right now how i can represent this name in a pascal case so you can see all these three words or first name last name and middle name come in this way so our first letter of each word come as a capital letter and there is no space between each word so in pascal case my name should look like this now if i took a camel case so this name should come like this so what is the difference between these two so you can see only the first letter of the first word should start with small letter after that each word first letter will be represented with capital letter and there is no space in between words so this is a representation of camel case for this name now coming to the streaming snakes case or constant case so always you have to write each word in upper case or capital letter and space will be replaced by underscore so these are basically three type of case and these three case will be used in our java programming for variable naming convention or method naming convention or maybe you are creating some class interface anything okay so always remember these three cases now let's create some example in eclipse to understand each of these and give your class name as data type and variable demo okay so if you check the naming convention so this is basically d cap t cap a cap v cap d cap so all word are start with capital letters so what is that case so this is nothing but our pascal case okay so when you create any type of class interface so always use your pascal case okay now i am going to create it with main method so let me click here and then finish so now my data type and variable demo class is created and this is look like this let me delete this comment part okay now i have already created a, a program uh, in notepad so i will copy paste the code base here so that it will take less time to and you can understand the deep level of the coding okay so our aim is to first create some variable and giving some value and then display that value okay so what i have to do then the first thing i have to do declare some variable of different type so this is a comment section in java we use this type of double slash to create a comment okay so for the timing just ignore this one just understand for you know your understanding purpose i am giving some comment here so here i written that it's a start of declaring data type so let me close it also so i am just trying to copy paste everything so that it will not take much more time for typing and you can understand more the detail parts of data type declarations okay so under this i am going to declare some data type so we already understand in our last class that we have number of data type right so all type of variable i am going to create under these two comment sections here our declaration will start and here i will end my declaration so let me again copy paste this code base then i will go one by one for each line okay now you can see here first i am declaring integer type so what is that integer type byte 
short, int, long. And I given some name here. So these are basically I given in such a way so that you can understand. But in practical or in you know real world, you have to give a proper naming conventions with proper understanding of that word. So let's say you are going to create a data type for age. So you can give the variable name like age. Okay. But here I am giving this way so that you can understand. Okay. So this is a byte type and I give the name like byte number so if you check this number again so it is nothing but I am using our camel case so whenever you are going to declare any variable it should be in camel case so first letter start with small for the first word and if there is second or third or any other word so that will start with capital letter so this way I first declare integer type byte short int long then I again declare float type or floating type so that is basically float and double and I have two variable name float number and double number again these are basically I am using only to for understanding purpose when real world you definitely have to give a proper name which is understandable okay now coming to the third one that is our sum character type okay so again the data type is character and variable name I am giving character alphabet so what I will do so I will store some alphabet a b c so that I give the name like character alphabet our third declarations is on boolean type so our data type is boolean and I given a name like boolean selections let's say it can be a true or false right so this way you can declare your variable in your program okay now let me double click it so that you will get a you know wider view so you can understand that how to declare a variable so this is your keyword of data type and this is your variable name and all variable name should start with small letter and if there is any extra word that will start capital letter so this is something our camel case and if you check the class name so i use pascal case okay so data then type then and then variable all each word okay here start with capital letters this is nothing but our pascal case now i have declared all our variable with proper data type now it's time to initialize uh, with some values right so let me again copy paste the other part okay so what we will do here we will initialize our variable with some value here so let me again for your understanding purpose make a comment that here we will start initializations and here we will end our initializations okay so under this block we are going to initialize our all the variable that we declare just above right so let me copy paste again the code base which i have written for you so if you check here okay so currently this is my byte number variable which i have written here right byte number which I have declared here now I have to give some value here and last day we already you know discussed that what is the range or what is the you know memory size right for byte so actually byte number is coming under this range minus 128 to 127 so you can put any value here let's say 120 if you check this one so you can easily understand that 120 is good to set as a byte number of type byte okay but if you make it more than this or less than that then you will get a compilation error and the beauty of using this type of id you will get a notifications here so if you check this one i have put one to nine that is greater than one to seven and you will get a notifications here if you just hover here so you can get here cannot convert into byte because the default type of integer is int and as it is you know beyond this range so it treated as integer but we 
we are actually initializing this value for a byte type so that's why it's given error here compilations error here okay so let me put it 120 or in between this range so if you make this one so it will not give you any error similar way sort number which is basically a type data type sort so this range is in between this so if i make any you know value under this let's say 30000 you will not get any error but if i put any value more than this or less than this i will get an error let put a extra 9 here so you can see a compile time error you can get here again okay so let me put it 30000 then coming to the int number under this range we can put any value so let me put a value like this one or we can you know give some less than value as well here okay so i'm not getting any error here right similarly there is a long number and its range is minus this to this so in between that you can give any value for our long number which is basically long type okay so if you check this one so this is basically in between this range if i make it like zero that is also in between this range okay now one more thing you have to remember here so when you are going to create any long number always do some best practice append a extra l and always try to use capital l i recommended here because if you make it small l it will look like one or i or l you cannot understand so better you do a capital here after this number okay now coming to the next one this is basically our character alphabet so if you check this one this is this type is nothing but a character type right which we declare above now we have to give some value here and as it's a single character so that's why i create a single quote here and under it you can give any a b c d or any character here okay now the next one is our boolean section so boolean sections actually hold true or false value so for this boolean selections variable which is a boolean data type we can declare its value as true or false so let me make it true for the time being so now my boolean selections variable also get a initialized value as true now coming to these two these are basically part of our floating point right now one is basically type float we already declare and another one is type is double now what is the main difference between float and double we already know that float and double it has you know different storage capacity definitely double is greater than float and not only that you have to remember one more thing here that float it offers maximum six to seven digit decimal what it's mean so if i put a value here let's say nine point eight seven six five four so you can see here i am giving some you know value after decimal point right so float actually offer maximum six to seven decimal point here okay so currently it's for me one two three four five five decimal point so while doing any float type always use a f just after your number okay similarly double it's definitely you know is storage as well as the range is more than float number and here it offer maximum 15 to 16 digit decimal point position so here i can give a float number like nine point something like this so it is more than float right and when you are creating any double number and trying to give some value always add a d okay d represent double just after this variables value okay now you can see i have created all these ty different type of variable and i also initialize all different type of variable here okay now only tricky part is this float number and double number because this is part of floating point float and double okay so what is the floating point number so i can give you an idea but for the time being just take an very high level idea if you need you know more details of floating type 
just comment so that I can create another video for the same now if you check this slide so here I have mentioned the floating point representation so it's something look like this first one is something sign then mantissa then radix and its exponent okay so if we trying to represent minus 2 there are multiple way to represent minus 2 using floating point so it can be as it's a minus so it sign part should be minus 1 now mantissa can be 2 20 0 0.2 or 0 0.02 or any other things okay now we have to maintain minus 2 value so that mean its exponent of radix will be different if radix is 10 then 10 to the power 0 this represent sine into mantissa into radix and its exponent it is represent with this formula at minus 2 again it's a 20 mantissa so radix should be 10 to the power of minus 1 so that it can maintain minus 2 similarly for 0.2 and 0 0.02 the multiplications of all these will become as a minus 2 these are something called floating point so this is a very high level but if you need more details definitely we will create a different set of video for the same now come to the programming again there is another type of variable which is called constant variable and we already learned that for constant variable we need constant type naming convention right so what is that that is something like this when you are trying to create a constant variable it should be look like this let me copy paste this one so you can understand this so now you can see I have declared a constant variable here public static final string this is your constant variable name and if you check this one this is our snake case right or constant type case so everything is come with capital letter and between these two letter there should be an underscore okay so this is our constant variable and I have initialized its value let's say in india okay so you have to make this constant variable with proper name for the time being like you know byte number or short number or int number i am also creating a constant variable name as constant variable only for your understanding now once i done everything my next part is to display all these variable value okay but before that just check one more beauty of eclipse id or any other id if you check here again some notifications are coming right so if i hover here so you can see this value of local variable byte number is not used if i check this one again the same message the value of the local variable sort number is not used so what it's mean though i have declared this one and i also initialize their value okay but i have not used a this you know this variable in any business logic or any part of our coding which is basically need for executions okay so for the same if i do some print statement for all this then you will not get this type of notifications again okay so these are one type of beauty of you know eclipse id so let me print all this statement let me copy paste from here and then paste it on our eclipse id so now in my last part of this coding i am going to display or printing all the variables which we basically initialize with some value right here you can see i have making some statement like system dot out dot print ln system dot out dot print ln system dot out dot print ln and under bracket i have mentioned byte number our variable name i have mentioned sort number our variable name i have mentioned int number our variable name even constant variable that i declared just few seconds ago as a constant variable right so everything i need in a console as a print statement so that's why i create a system dot out dot print ln for the time being just ignore what is system what is out what is print ln just remember to print any statement in java you need system dot out dot print ln and under bracket you have to give the statement which you want to print here we want to print the value of each variable so that's why under bracket i have put it all the variable name okay 
now one more thing you again notice here all the notifications gone here why because i have now used all these variable for painting purpose right now let me run this program and let's check all these variable value come properly or not once you click on this run so you can see here it's running and i am getting all these values so let me make it best up okay so you can see my byte number that was set 120 right i have set is 120 so byte number come as 120 then sort number 30000 so i have make a pinned statement for sort number so my second thing is come as 30000 then the int number value then long number value then float value then double value and then the character i have put it the character as a so it's again come as a a and then boolean boolean selections value i have said to true so it's come as a true and we know that we already put our constant value as india so it's come as an india so this way you can declare your variable and then you can initialize its value and you can use it for your business logic purpose okay there is one more thing i want to uh, highlight here so currently for your understanding i have make two part one is declarations part and one is initialization part but based on your programming logic you can declare and initialize both these in a single line so if you see this one byte number so this is my declarations and this is my initializations okay if i commenting this one so i can make this 120 value initializations in this line itself so byte then equal to 120 so you can see here that i have declared as well as initialize both this in in a single line so everything you can do based on your you know programming demand so this is more or less our small program for declaring variable and then initialize its value and what is the exact naming convention for each you know variable so hope you can understand and you can now confident to create your variable initializations and also doing some statement like this okay let's meet in our next class I believe this video has helped you to understand about the topic. Thank you for watching. Please do subscribe, click on the bell notifications and select all so that you don't miss any video from this channel.